Do you want to make sure your kids don't end up in therapy? Hi there and welcome back to Ask Dr. Syra, the show where I answer your questions about personal growth, mental health, and relationships. Today's question comes from Zul. Zul says, as a parent, how can I make sure my kids won't need to be in therapy when they're older because I traumatized them? As a parent, how can I make sure my kids won't need to be in therapy when they're older because I traumatized them? I think this is a really brave question, Zoe, um, and I applaud you for asking it. Um, and I, I bet you it's a question that, that many parents have, right? Like, how do I make sure my kid's okay and they don't end up, like, really damaged because of something I've done? So to answer this question, I want to talk about three different things. So first is um, stigma. The second is um, bonding. And finally... Uh, the environment. Okay, so stigma, bonding, and the environment. So let's start with stigma. What you described in your question actually is it's kind of a coded, it's kind of a coded comment, right? To say like, I don't want my kids to do therapy because something's wrong with you if you're doing therapy. It's kind of coded in the question, and you're not the only one who feels that way. There's like entire groups of people that don't really think therapy is necessary or needed, um, don't really believe that it helps, um, and just think it's kind of a waste of time, that mental illness isn't really a real thing either, and that people should like toughen up and be able to do it on their own. And yet, hundreds of people are helped by therapy every year, right? So, that stigma around needing to ask for professional help, that's the thing I would, I would encourage you to look at that in yourself, right? That am I actually buying into this story about I should be able to do this on my own and I shouldn't need anyone's help, especially not a professional, right? Um, in traditional societies, the ways that we lived were very different than the ways that we're living today. And a lot of those natural protections that were there for us, um, meals with others, uh, time to rest, um, family connection, joint family living, um, small communities where people knew each other. These things are no longer there for most of us. And so those naturally protective things that would have been built in for us, for our wellness, are not there. And so we have to seek them out, right? We have to create them. We have to seek them out. And one of the ways is to have a place where you can talk without filter about what's troubling you. And some people have that in their faith community. Some people have that in their families or they have friends. And some people, you know, some, sometimes what you want to talk about isn't really appropriate for your family or your friends to hear, or it's not comfortable for you to talk about with them, or they're too biased. Let's be honest, right? And so when you come to therapy, you get a chance to explore things in a way that you wouldn't get to in the, with people who know you really well people who have been watching you grow since childhood. Your therapist has a different perspective on you altogether because they're just meeting you, right? They don't have any preconceived ideas of who you are or what your story should be. And so that's the first thing I would say, Zul, is looking at your own maybe internalized stigma around therapy and um, the necessity of it and what it means if somebody needs therapy, what it means about their character. Because that's one of the things that often stops people from seeking help is that they say, well, something must be wrong with me if I'm going to need this kind of professional help. No, there's nothing wrong with you, right? It's just you've got to a place beyond. It's kind of like an example that I'll give you. I mean, it's a very, it's a simple example, but I'm going to give you this example. So we were thinking about painting our house, right? So we got on YouTube, we we're watching YouTube videos about painting, and we we're talking to people who know a little bit about it, about what tools we need to buy and what paint and this and that. And then we actually walked around our house and looked at the places we'd be painting. And we said, oh, that's going to be really hard. We don't have the ladders and the pulley systems that are required to be safe doing this. We just don't have the equipment. And even if we had the equipment, we have zero training. And so we might do it, but are we going to do it well? Probably not. And so we called in the professional painters and said, hey, give us a quote. <laughs> What's it going to take to fix this thing? And we let them do it. Right? We gave them the authority to do it for us. 
Um, now, your therapist can't do your healing for you, but they are, they do have some expertise in the way the mind works, the way relationships work, the way the unconscious works, which you might not have. And even for those of us who are therapists, like a good therapist probably has their own therapist, right? Because we need a place to just unload that's safe and that's confidential. And so thinking about your own stigma. The second is, um, and you know, there's a part of me that thinks everybody should have therapists. <laughs> I love therapy. I think it's fantastic. But some people don't buy into it. And that's okay. As long as you're getting some sort of support from somewhere, right? You're not trying to do this alone. The second thing is around the bond, right? So when you think about your relationship with your children, if you can focus more on the bond, being present with them, repairing ruptures when they occur, and having a sense of contentment in your own life, that's going to be so valuable for your children. If your children are in a household where the adults are pretty content, where they're able to be present, where they're able to talk through and repair ruptures, and they feel bonded and seen and loved by their parents, that's going to be way, way, way stronger than the ups and downs of childhood, right? And and there may be trauma, right? But here's the thing, it, onto the third thing is like, you can't control everything that happens to your kid. So you might do all the right things as a parent, but then somebody they really love in the family who's close to them passes away. Well, that child's going to feel the pain of that, might even have trauma because of that, right? Or, you know, everything's fine in the family system, but there's a teacher at school that doesn't really seem to like them, or there's a friend that, you know, lets them down. There's going to be something, right? Life is just like that. That's how we learn about ourselves. That's how we grow. So they might end up in therapy, even if you do everything right. And as a parent, I can tell you, I feel like we're making it up most of the time anyway, right? <laughs> it's like, let's try this. Let's try that. We do the best we can. And when we know better, we do better, right? And so in 30 years or however many years before your child is an adult, you know, there may be some new information that says, oh, this thing that we used to do for kids, bad idea. And so they'll end up, you know, maybe seeking help for that, for whatever they want to undo. So those are the three, three things I would say is that there is, sounds like there's some internalized stigma. So maybe looking at that, um, focusing on the bond and being present with your child, being content in your own life and being willing to repair ruptures, that will be protective for your child. And also finally, you can't, you can't protect them from everything. There are going to be difficulties and maybe even difficulties that will land them in therapy. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you have a question, please feel free to write me. Uh, my email address is at the end of this video. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.